Our hopes of meeting allies on the road to Shiring were fading with every mile. The only people we saw were sitting by the side of the road, broken and starving. Shiring was riddled with death and despair. I'd heard that Wigley had just been raided by outlaws, leaving them almost entirely without cattle. Maybe someone there knew where the raiders had come from. But Calford, on the other hand, had a recent falling out with William Hamley. There was a chance that they would be quick to join our resistance. We entered the village. There was a weary young man trying to repair a roof. He pointed toward a ruined mill. Hamley's mill, he called it, which used to have the right to grind all grain from the nearby villages. That was until a few days ago. Hamley had come to collect his share and, due to the famine, was met with empty coffers. Enraged, he'd killed the miller and had taken every last bag of flour belonging to the starving people of Calford. Many had fled into the forest, desperate for their lives. As we reached Wigley, we met a farmer tending to a scrawny chicken. She told us that Hamley had claimed ownership of all their cattle. Shortly after that, the cattle vanished. Raiders had taken it, throwing William Hamley into a fit of rage. Some say they recognized the thieves, neighbors who had once lived among them. They were long believed to be among the dead. Were we really building our hopes on a pack of ghosts? The fields of Huntley spurred fond memories. Here, I'd negotiated my first deal to transport and sell the farmer's wool. Now, the meadows had turned to straw and the sheep were dead. Soon, we reached Uncle Simon's abandoned hut. Our horses needed rest, so we wanted to leave them there while we looked around on foot. Then. I remembered how Richard had been kicked by the man William had paid to catch us, and the horrible sounds he'd made lying there. Inside the hut, I was startled by a hunched figure hiding in a corner, nibbling on a lump of bread. Upon seeing us, the creature's eyes widened like those of a frightened animal. I asked him where he got bread in times like these. Was it stolen? No, I got it from the butcher. The people at Sally's quarry told me to ask the butcher, he blurted out, startled by his own voice. Mistaking our interest for greed, he wolfed down the rest of the bread. Before we could ask more, the frightened man jumped up and fled into the forest. The butcher? Was he the one we were looking for? A leader whom the downtrodden trusted and feared? Maybe we could find him at the quarry the man had mentioned. On the road to Shiring, a shrouded figure jumped into our path. It was an outlaw, fumbling a blunt sword once fit for a knight. He demanded our horses and coin. Richard calmly pulled out his own sword, shutting the man up immediately. I asked whether they, the outlaws, had a kind of leader I could speak to. His face said it all, a confused, furrowed brow and a wrinkled nose. We have no leader, we're on our own, he spat out, then ran away as fast as he could. Shiring had been declining for years. Only the cathedral had been growing day by day, looming over the lands. That cathedral seemed to be sucking the land dry. Its presence was malevolent, like a bad omen. To fund the construction, Hamley had expelled countless tenants who were behind on their payments, taking their possessions. This made the impact of the famine even worse than it already was.
The abandoned quarry was teeming with activity. Many poor souls were gathering around a fireplace, boiling a stew from meat and turnips. It was plain to see that these people weren't held together by blood or profession, but by hunger and desperation. And by their numbers, I thought, that could make them quite dangerous. Were these outlaws? The outlaws were using a moss-covered cave and little huts as shelter. Through the cave entrance, we could see stacked crates of goods, most likely stolen. The outlaws were of varying ages and seemed almost peaceful in their little haven. Suddenly, we were startled by a shout. Who are you? A boy demanded with anger in his eyes. All eyes darted towards us. Their reactions were as varied as their faces. Some looked afraid, curious and confused. Others were full of hatred and contempt. We're not here to hurt you, I explained. We just want to talk. Where can I find the butcher? I asked. Their faces expressed anger and fear. I explained that we were looking for food. They told us that the butcher was still in Monksfield, but that meat would come every couple of days. I said that wouldn't be a problem, not knowing what they meant. It looked like our path would lead us back to Monksfield. Thank you for giving me and my friend shelter the other day. Weather's fine now. So what do you want this time? Someone told us they got meat in Monksfield. Oh dear, I hope you didn't come empty-handed. Only if you bring me an animal, then I can prepare it for you. A horse, maybe? So this is horse meat? Where would you find a horse in times like these? Do people call you the butcher then? There is much truth in your words, but... Why do you ask? What do you want? Do you have a lot of outlaws passing by? You don't see it in their faces, dear. But we all have been failed by the law and our leaders. Don't you agree? I asked because we feel the same way. And we're looking for a way to make things right again. Is that so? We're looking to build an army to invade Earl's Castle and kill Earl William Hamley. Oh, my. If it was that easy, someone would have done that a long time ago. The poor souls I meet, they're just simple people. They're not an army. We would lead them. I'm a knight. I know how to turn ordinary men into fighters. In their condition, most of them can barely kill a chicken, let alone a man. These people are mothers, fathers, hard workers, yes. But they are not soldiers. We'd reward them if they helped us. You must know we are the rightful heirs to Earl Bartholomew of Shiring, and would show ourselves very generous. So, you're just another pair of nobles who want to use us as pawns in their battle to die for you. It is the best chance we have. This is a battle for the sake of the people of Shiring, for all of us. It's rubbish, it's what it is. We are offering you a chance to rid the land of Hamley, to fight for your freedom. The last time I saw you, you showed kindness toward that young woman who was with you. I am willing to listen to a good soul, but I won't help you blindly. That woman that was here, that you helped, 
That was Amelie's wife, his wife, by God. How stupid do you think we are? Right, it's a trap. Well, how can these people put their life at risk if they do not trust you? You are not like us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Oh, I know what it's like to live in poverty. And just like you, we have William Hamley to thank for it. But I also know that if one fights the right battles, that things can change for the better. But they're starving, my child. They are weakened by poverty, hunger and illness. Who are you to think you can face William Hamley? Yeah. You! Who do you think you are? Hmm. <laughs> We are the children of Bartholomew, Earl of Shiring. Our father once ruled with a firm but benevolent hand. You must remember how good you had it. Well, better than now, but that's easy. He did have guts, though, trying to take on Stephen. So, you are his daughter and son, you say? Yes. All we know, we learned from him. Yeah, good point. Yeah! Man. Yeah! Mm-hmm. Even if we work together, Hamley is too powerful. You ask us to sacrifice our lives for your noble cause, these people will die. We already have Kingsbridge on our side, including the bright mind of Prior Philip. Oh, Philip of Kingsbridge. I have heard of him, a wise man. Yes. He took in the survivors of Amley's raid of Earl's Castle. Yes, and I was one of them. He wouldn't let anybody go into certain death. Their plan must be a good plan. Yeah. Yeah. She does. Yeah. I said it before. We all have lost everything except for our lives. We don't fight other people's battles. But maybe this is our battle too. My people will decide for themselves. But I will tell them that I believe that it is indeed a battle worth fighting. I thank you. I pray that it will be worth it. We will all pray, and then we fight. <laughs>